The most active stretch for severe weather that we've seen so far this year is likely going to be in play across portions of the central and eastern United States over the early portions of this week. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about this system. So let's go ahead and get right into it. But before we do, make sure to click that like and subscribe button down below because we are going to be going live for every single one of these severe weather events for hours that we mention in this video. So starting off with today, we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather in effect for portions of the Carolinas and East Central Georgia. At this point, our threat for significant damaging winds and tornadoes is mainly going downhill. We actually did have a strong tornado this morning near Hattiesburg, Mississippi, but as of right now, a 5% tornado risk is still in play for portions of South Carolina and Eastern Georgia, so if you are in this area, make sure that you do have a tornado action plan in place, and then again, some significant damaging winds up to 70 to 75 miles an hour also can't be ruled out across portions of the East Coast. Now, as we go into tomorrow, we now have an enhanced risk for sections of South southeastern Kansas, driven by a 10% hatch tornado threat. This includes areas like Wichita, and in this region tomorrow, we could be talking about the potential for a couple of significant tornadoes of EF2 strength or greater. So if you're in this area, make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts tomorrow, and make sure that you do have a tornado action plan in place so you know where to go whenever severe weather strikes. Now, the damaging wind risk is also going to exist for tomorrow. Again, a 30% risk of damaging winds of 60 miles an hour or higher across portions of southeastern Kansas, with that 15% risk going around outside of it from sections of Illinois back into Texas, so we'll also be on the lookout for some significant damaging winds. And then the biggest threat that we currently have right now for tomorrow is going to be that hail risk. We have a 30% hatched risk for hail across sections of eastern Kansas. So if you're in this area tomorrow, again, make sure that you are bringing your car inside of the garage, stuff like that, because we are going to be talking about hail potentially up to the size of baseballs or larger. So again, if you're anywhere in that black outline circle, make sure that you are prepared for stuff like that. Now, as we go into Wednesday, this is where the biggest severe weather outbreak of this entire stretch likely comes into play. Right now, we have an enhanced risk of severe weather from portions of southern Michigan all the way back down into northeastern Texas, and this already includes over 45 million people. Now, a lot of these areas have been impacted already recently over the past couple of weeks by significant severe weather, so if you are in this area, stay prepared because we are not anywhere near done yet. Now, we do already have a hatch indicator in play for this area, but again, as we are three days out from this event, we can't see what the specific hatch threats are for this, but we can likely assume that we're definitely going to have that threat for some very large hail, significant damaging winds up to 80 miles an hour, and strong tornadoes certainly cannot be ruled out as well. Now, as we go into Thursday, we do have a day four slight risk of severe weather here brought to you by Nike. This extends from sections of northeastern Texas back into southwestern Pennsylvania. And personally, I think that this is going to be a big time damaging wind risk, but I wouldn't rule out a couple of isolated tornadoes across the mid-Mississippi Valley with a potential for an enhanced risk upgrade driven by a 10% tornado threat. But that's still very far out, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the models are showing here for these events over the next few days. So this is the NAM model here. We can see that as we go into late tonight, we're going to start to see some thunderstorms pop up across sections of central Nebraska, sub-severe, and the real threat for severe weather is going to get going pretty late tomorrow night. This is 10 p.m. We're going to be talking about significant damaging winds across sections of central Kansas, and again, potentially back into southeastern Kansas there. Now, you will notice that the NAM model here doesn't really have too many discrete supercells firing out ahead of our line of storms, so that would likely limit our tornado threat significantly, and especially our strong tornado threat if we're just dealing with a linear mode but keep in mind, this is still going to bring a significant threat for damaging winds and potentially even a low-end derecho event for portions of the Central Plains if the line does make its way eastward far enough. I personally don't think it's going to happen, but it's not entirely impossible. Now, as we go into Wednesday morning, more of those thunderstorms are going to continue there across portions of Missouri and eastern Kansas, but the big-time severe weather threat really starts to get going around noon, where we start to see some discrete supercells pop up in portions of Arkansas, and that kind of continues, only lifting further off to the north. By 3 p.m. here, we're dealing with an absolute mess of supercells all the way from sections of southeast Iowa back into southern Arkansas. And personally, I do think that, again, Wednesday could definitely bring us a significant tornado threat if things do play out like this. Potential for a moderate and even a high-risk upgrade are certainly in play as of right now, but we're just going to have to wait and see what the models show us as the event gets closer and closer. But again, significant severe thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes definitely look to be a huge possibility. Now, the biggest thing driving this event is our moisture content. These are dew points here. You can kind of see as we go into tomorrow, those dew points are going to rise into the 60s across portions of Oklahoma and Kansas where we're expecting that line of storms to develop. And eventually those are going to make it way further off to the east as well, pretty much being in the 60s and 70s for the entirety of the eastern United States 
And even back in the portions of the upper Midwest, right, we're dealing with dew points in the mid to high 60s across portions of southern Illinois and even portions of southeastern Missouri getting into the low 70s, which is not something that we typically see even for this time of year. So if you are in this area tomorrow, again, make sure that you do have a tornado action plan in place. Obviously, dew points aren't the only thing that drive a significant tornado threat. Another thing that you're going to need is wind shear, and boy, do we have plenty of that. As we take a look at this sounding taken from portions of southern Arkansas for our Wednesday event, you can see that we have 96 knots of wind shear at the cloud layer and 70 knots of wind shear at the surface layer, which if you don't know is very extreme wind shear values and typically stuff that we see whenever we're expecting a widespread tornado outbreak. Now, I will say in this particular portion of Arkansas, the lapse rates aren't too darn impressive, but they are still enough for us to see a couple of strong tornadoes. And again, certain portions of Arkansas do get higher lapse rates at times as well. Well, 85 joules per kilogram of cape in the first three kilometers of the atmosphere, obviously going to be enough to support a significant tornado threat. A significant drop-off in dew points as you get higher up in the atmosphere, which could lead to a gorilla hail threat. Again, some of the analogs here showing us some large to very large hail. Uh, the effective layer STP right now at a 7, which for something four days out is very impressive. The PDS tour on the possible hazard type and a very impressive photograph there showing a lot of instability. Decent storm slinky curved at about 73 degrees, and then also SRH value sitting at about 400, so very impressive environment out here. Now, before we end off this video, I do want to take a look at our current watches, warnings, and advisories. Again, we are seeing a localized severe weather outbreak across portions of the southeastern United States right now, and potentially portions of the northeast and even southern New England as we go later into tonight, so be on the lookout in that area. A very large flood watch has been issued from portions of central Ohio back in the far northeastern Texas, and this is all due to the fact that, again, these areas have seen quite a few severe thunderstorm events over the past few days, and we're setting up for another one over the next couple of days, so some significant rainfall totals are certainly going to be a possibility. But other than that, pretty calm right now, so if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. But as always, huge shout out to all of our channel members. You guys keep this channel going in times of fluctuating ad revenue from YouTube since I am a smaller creator. If you would like to become a member, make sure to do so by clicking the link down in the description. You get access to members-only shout outs at the end of every video, exclusive videos, and more. That's all I've got for you guys today, so if you did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.